everybody welcome back to sister to sister if you are loving this look it is in my previous episode so you guys can get all of the deets on this beat but today is sister to sister guys a lot of you packed in my DMs about this particular subject it's all about the B Smith and the Dan Gatsby scandal so I have a Wikipedia right here. I just want to go through a couple of things before I start. Yes. Barbara Elaine Smith was born August 24th, 1949, known as B. Smith, is an American restaurateur, model, author, and television host. Smith has been married twice. Her first marriage was to former HBO executive Don Anderson, and then she married her business partner, Clarence Dan Gatsby, in 1992, 27 years ago. He was the executive producer of the Essence Awards and the senior vice president of marketing at Camelot Entertainment Sales. Smith has no children, but a stepmother to Gatsby's daughter, Dana. In 2014, Smith revealed that she had been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease, stating that she came out with the information to counter the stigma associated with the disease. In November 2014, Smith's husband reported her missing from Southampton, New York. She was found the next day in a cafe in Midtown Manhattan. Now, what the Wikipedia does not say is that her husband, Dan Gatsby, of 27 years, who is the caregiver to Barbara, has a girlfriend. And that is fine because she has had this illness for a while. Prior to the girlfriend, they came out with a book called Before I Forget. And she wanted to shed light, like it had said in the Wikipedia, about the disease and remove the stigma from the disease. The controversy here is Dan Gatsby has brought in his girlfriend, who is called Alex. Alex is a very attractive woman. She's got beautiful strawberry blonde hair. She's of Caucasian descent. And they came together because her father also had uh, Alzheimer's disease. And so that was their bond. The interesting thing here is that Alex not only is uh, Dawn's girlfriend, she has also moved into Dawn's marital home with B. Smith. So it's the three of them. It is the wife, the girlfriend, the husband. Unfortunately, B. Smith, as I had stated in 2014, she had gone missing. So she's not all there. That is what Alzheimer's is. I took my time before I wanted to respond to this. And I watched some interviews from The View, earlier interviews when B. Smith was coherent enough to express how she felt. And I'm gonna put all of those links down below. Um, Dan Gatsby has continuously, in all of the interviews, he's a caregiver, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot on him, he felt lonely, the wife wasn't there, so on and so forth. And I empathize with that. I empathize with my mindset that you have lost your love the way that it used to be. The way I look at it, when you say you're a caregiver, you're this, you're that, it should all go underneath husband. Because when you guys first got married, 27 years ago, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, all of those vows were there. That is the deal that was dealt with you. Heaven forbid, but if anything happens to me, if anything happens to Ula, that is the deal. I don't go anywhere. I don't bring anybody in. That is the deal. I will love you through it all, through the sickness, through the good times, through the bad times, through the good health, through it all. That is the deal. I have cut this slice of pie and whatever is in it, that is what I'm going to take through thick or thin. I am a mature individual. I love to say that. And so I've earned my stripes to be candid. I don't want to beat around the bush. And this is how I see it. I feel that Dan Gatsby is a narcissist. In all the interviews, he was the victim. It wasn't B. Smith. B. Smith was a sensational model. She was the first black model to be on the cover of Mademoiselle, an American magazine circa 1976. 
She has gone on to write books. She has gone on to own restaurants. She is an absolute icon. Right from Iman, that circle, fashion fair, Flory Roberts, Naomi Sims, she comes from that era, from that 1976 glam pop era where the gorgeous woman of color was stepping up and out. That was who she was. It is unfortunate about her decline. And I want to keep her the way that she was with full cognizance of the fact that she has this dilapidating disease. I say this because I took offense when Dawn came onto the view and said, oh, she's great from the eyebrows down, but she has the mind of a toddler. We know what Alzheimer's is. You don't have to describe your wife like that. Keep her dignity, keep her legacy, which I felt personally that you failed. You see, everything that Dawn has done is okay. To me, it's all right. Nothing wrong with it. Some people need that physical presence more than others. If Ula and I are no longer physical, it's okay for me because I'm only physical with him. That is what ignites me. That's what sets the fire burning within me. I don't want it from anybody else. That's just me, so it's a personal preference, yeah? Okay, there's nothing wrong with him having a girlfriend. Nothing at all, absolutely. I have the bone of contention here that he brought this girlfriend of his into the home. That is a whole level of wrong. He was asked on two separate occasions on The View whether B said this was okay because he kept on going on that they agreed to this, they agreed to that. Did B agree for you to bring your girlfriend into their marital home? He had no answer for that because I know that B plus her Alzheimer's would never agree to that. Absolutely not. There's just no way. So don't come here to try to pull the wool over our eyes. And I say Dan is a narcissist because he's only thinking of himself. He's trying to justify what he has done by saying he has taken on this huge, great responsibility. When that is your duty. The other day, Ula was filming me, had Adrian on his back, had the controls. Is he a caregiver to myself and Adrian? Yes, but it all falls under husband and father, just the way it will fall under for me as mother and wife that is the deal that i cut so don't come here trying to say oh i'm taking care of her i have to do this i could have put her in a care home you would never put her in a care home she's got too much money what would you be doing what is your use if you put her in a home then you are rendered useless i'm going to stop there for a minute have you noticed guys that if you go to a funeral the booklets that they put on the pews for all of us to pick up the person that is deceased, it is always a picture of their past, when they were vibrant, more often they're smiling. And you always say, yes, that is the Fumi I know. There is not a single family where they would put their family member that is deceased and put a dilapidating, sick picture on the cover. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. I don't know any funeral that I've gone to where I've seen a picture of the deceased and it was a picture of recent from the hospital or something or the corpse. How about that? But that is how Dan has been painting B. Smith. Mind of a toddler. She's not there. She's this. We didn't have to know that. But more importantly, you didn't have to portray your wife like that. I thought about this, I thought about this, and nobody would want to be stripped in the marketplace naked for all and sundry to see all your scars, your marks. No, absolutely not. My father has been married to my mother 52 years, and he would never do that. Mind you, like I said, not bad. It's not a bad thing. Have something to keep you warm at night if that is what you need. Some people need different things and I can understand that. What I don't understand is why you would bring her to the home. She could have a house somewhere. You could have it on the deal, on the down low, out of respect for your wife, out of respect for maybe family members of your wife because I have not seen any family member step up in B's defense. 
you have your daughter speaking in your defense. Blood is thicker than water. This is why I'm so happy I have Adrian today because you got to have your own. This is where it counts. You're not hoping for it. You hope you don't need to draw that card, but this is where it counts because she doesn't have any children. She doesn't have any family that we have heard speak up in her defense. Now I'm gonna take it to the next level. And you know what? Because I've earned the stripes, and so I'm gonna call it like it is. And Beyonce has sung it. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. Against all odds, all day, every day, we are plowing through this, that. We struggle with the relationship, light skin, dark skin. But it cuts deeper when it's your own people that treat you like that. And that is why American women are in an uproar. Because it's not about race and yet it is everything about race. You brought this white chick up in my house. Do you really think B would have agreed to that? She would have cut this girl's head off. And you know it to be true. Just the last episode of Sister to Sister, I talked about Girl Code. The girlfriend's name is called Alex. Alex, how dare you? How dare you, sister? How dare you? Step up in that woman's house and lay your head and spread your legs because that's what you're doing. Talking about we've had a bond now with Dan and I don't see it that way. Of course you don't see it that way. How heavenly convenient. But I will call it what it is. No girl code. No honor. What a disgrace on you. What a shame on you. It is so very, very, very wrong on so many levels. And you wouldn't take it if it was you. Dan, do you see? When our own brothers treat us this way, what we gonna do? We get it left and right, we get it at work, we get this, we get that. Our own brother, Dan, is treating B. Smith, an icon, a queen like that. You tilted her crown and you kicked it out the door. That's what you did. That's why we're mad. That's why everybody's mad. And I'm in a mixed marriage. So I can say it. I can say it. Because I would never treat Ula like that in the glare of his people. I just wouldn't do it. There are certain things that you just don't do. Everybody keeps on saying it's not because she's white. There's a part of it because she's white. There's also a part of it because she is a woman. There's also a part of it because we all know that B would never agree to this. Who is speaking up for this woman? And you, Dan, you're so selfish. And you thought after you had told this to your clique that you could take a trash can, you could put the shrimp, you could put the prawns, you could put the flowers, and you could serve it to us, and we would still not see the stink we saw it a mile away and that's why this thing went viral because we knew that this was some bs and you know what serve it to somebody who doesn't know don't serve it to us we knew who b smith was before we ever knew who you were and now that we do it is with such disappointment it is with such sorrow beyond anger just sorrow you're so disappointed. Uh, I watched the episode, The Talk, and I, I've forgotten her name. She was crying. The woman of color, I've forgotten. She was crying. She was so upset she was crying because it cuts deep. It cuts deep. There is nothing like when your own folk come up and treat you that kind of way. It's a different kind of hurt. And that is why this thing has gone to where it is. So that is it, my darlings. Leave all of your comments, leave all of your questions down in the comment section below. And you guys, let me know how you feel. Tell me for me, you know what? I don't agree, I agree. It's all up for debate. I am open to all of this. But this is how I feel about this particular case. All right, darlings? I love you so very much. Women, we have to do better. Men, we have to do better. Brothers, some of you have to step up the way you treat our sisters, our Caucasian sisters. Don't give us cause to come up after y'all. Stay in your lane. Don't disrespect us like that. 
and think that it's okay. It's not okay. Good night.